touring is part and parcel of an orchestra's life. It's very good for morale to be judged against other great orchestras in the world. An orchestra that isn't touring is a moaning orchestra. Ninety-four players from the Royal Liverpool Philharmonic Orchestra get ready for another concert. Tonight, they're playing away. The venue, Granada. Ninety-six hours and three concerts ago, they opened their Spanish tour in the northern town of Lugo. Now, on a diet of snatched sleep, perpetual motion and blistering heat, they're 800 miles south, preparing for the high spot of the tour in Granada's magnificent Alhambra Palace. Their program consists of French music on a Spanish theme, under their guest conductor, Sir Charles Mackerras. we shall be, or even less, we are going to Spain, a country of some contrasts. We're going to the northwestern province of Galicia, where we play at Lugo. We're also going to the far southern province of Andalusia, where we're playing at the Granada Festival. Somebody asked me how I could draw a comparison. I said, rather like a Spanish orchestra coming to, coming to Britain to play and actually finding that they were playing at the Fishguard Festival and at the Edinburgh Festival. On, on this very large map, uh, first of all, to state the very obvious, Spain is a large place. It has over 30 million um, inhabitants. It is a large-ish country. In a way, I'm looking forward to going because it's a break with the friends and that in the orchestra because we have a, a reasonable social life within the orchestra, which is quite lucky compared with a lot of jobs, I think. I've been involved with the orchestra 10 or 12 times now. We've been to most of the countries of Western Europe. We've been to Poland. We've been to Spain before, so we're Looking forward to going back there again. We went to Madrid two years ago, and now we're sampling Lugo and Granada. Uno, Uno. Dos. Dos. Tres. Tres. Cuatro. Cuatro. Cinco. Cinco. That'll do for now for the numbers. If you go to the bars, uh, if you actually go up to the bar, you can buy your drinks there, order your drinks at the bar. If you sit at a table or outside, they expect to serve you. A glass of an ordinary tumbler is un vaso de, un vaso de, un vaso de, un vaso de. Alcoholic drinks, cognac. The next one looks awful, but in fact it sounds the same as ours, and it's whiskey. Well, the first day is going to be a very long day. It's going to be a sort of 16 hour day, leaving at quarter to six in the morning, which is uh, pretty early, <laughs> to say the least. But, uh, sorry, yeah, I'm, you're interrupting my marking. Uh, <laughs> but, and the middle day obviously is five o'clock start, which is hard. But it's a lot of hard work, but we, we look forward to it anyway. It makes a change from visiting Blackburn and Preston and Bradford. Uh, it's always nice to visit new places. And a little bit of sun, I hope, too. It presents a, a big challenge to us when we go abroad. Perhaps in a way it's rather like a, an enlarged football team who have played all home grounds and uh, won a few games, perhaps drawn a few and lost a few, but uh, hopefully won most of them. 
Hang on, who's who's at the bars? Silly, this isn't it. He looks in bars sometimes. Right? I knew I'd get this cassette back from David sometimes. <laughs> One of the major problems of touring is coping with members of the orchestra who either don't wake up in time to get to the plane or they leave their instruments behind, they miss ferries and they can't find a concert hall. They will moan generally before they go if they have a very heavy schedule and they can see that they've got to get up at five o'clock in the morning and they worry about it but once they get there and they get involved they do tend to make the most of it and uh, Orchestral tours are usually the most memorable part of the orchestral player's life. I feel terrible with this thing going on. <laughs> <laughs> and when we go abroad, it's a fresh challenge. We're playing in new places. And wherever I've gone with the orchestra in previous years, we've always been well received as uh, musicians, ambassadors for Merseyside. The ladies fell for Rudolph Valentino. He had a Pino back in this palmy days. He knew every time you meet an icy creature, you've got to teach her her bloody Latin ways. But even Rudy would have felt the strain of making smooth advances in the rain. All this year I'm off to sunny Spain. Hey, I'm taking the Costa Brava plane. El Viva España. If you'd like to check the matador in some cool cabana and meet Senorita Spider Score. España, por favor. I've only been once before. That was Madrid. That was marvelous. I think Madrid enjoyed that. I'm looking forward to going to Granada. That should be very, very good. Apart from going to Ibiza for a holiday, I've never actually been to Spain, really, so I don't know much about it. This time I kissed him behind the castanet. He rattled his maracas to me. I'm trying to kid myself at the moment. I'm sort of on a Balearic holiday, and it suddenly hit me after lunch that I'm really not, you know, and uh, something serious has got to happen. It is, it is hard work, I guess. <coughs> we'll, we'll all realise that at the rehearsal at 5 o'clock this afternoon, because... Uh, Body clocks will start to take their toll, certainly by the interval of the concert tonight, I think. You're going to start feeling quite tired before the Brookner Symphony even happens. You see, what the general public doesn't know, I mean, the programme about the LSO, that was all lies. They're going to get a real picture of what orchestral life is really about, you know. <gasps> Late. <laughs> <laughs> Do sit down, dear boy, will you? No <laughs> heckling from the back row, thank you very much. I'll buy you a gin later on to shut up. <laughs> this time of the day, this is when we have our, our New Year's resolution time, we all say we're going to go to bed early and uh, turn in early, but, you know, sometimes the adrenaline carries on a little bit after the concert. It might take us, um, take our erring steps into a restaurant or something like that. Hope not, because we really ought to go to bed, of course, but we shall see. I think you'll see a few fun um, antics tonight, I think. Frolicking. Frolicking is the Frolicking. word. By the way, this gentleman is not in the orchestra. <laughs> He's my butler. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, I think if any, everybody enjoyed music, there won't be any trouble with drugs or anything like that in this in the, in the world. I mean, uh, we're going to play some marvellous French music. We'll be transported away. You know, people don't need all this. Smoke. They don't need drink for a start. All you need is good music. That's what I think. <laughs> <laughs> they're not musicians, they're only brass players. <laughs> hey. I suppose the general public think an orchestra is a pretty, um, you know, slick bunch of people, but I mean, they're far worse than a rugby club or anything like that. I think.